Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Absolutely amazing that you're here joining me once again out, well, I'm in the landscape and I wanna take you to a location that I shot the other night. Now, uh, on the way, I've picked up my coffee and my bicky. Now, this is not quite as good as my rum ball. It's not bad. Jam bicky here with, uh, I don't know, shortbread. Pretty good. I'm a sucker for shortbread, I'll tell you what. But I'm out here traveling along. Now, the other night, I had this bit of a, um, a quirky thought. I thought, I'm going to revisit a place, a location that I've shot before. Now, if you follow this channel, you'll know that very often I will suggest to go back to locations that we've previously shot and try and capture something a little bit different in that particular scene. Now that might be a different composition, it might be a different time of year that you go, uh, and that's what I decided to do, different time of year back to the same location. But I wanna show you something first. Now I've just been going through my 2023 Nightscape Images calendar, which by the way are available and I'll put a link down below. You can order them. I can send these anywhere in the world. Now, in fact, I have been. I've sent dozens and dozens and dozens of them already all over the place. But I was, I was looking for a location to go and shoot something that I'd shot before. And I just happened to be browsing through my calendar. And I came to February. And in February, you can see this beautiful tree. Hopefully, you can see that image. And I thought to myself, I shot this back oh well over a year ago and i thought to myself this little tree as fairly insignificant as it is can make an absolutely fantastic subject under the stars and so i knew the milky way galactic core was going to be setting just behind this tree so i decided i'm gonna shoot the tree it doesn't matter if it's in my calendar i'm gonna shoot it again with a different background but I want to tell you now, uh, things didn't quite go to plan. Well, follow me today and I'll explain the whole story. Okay, well here we are at our destination. This is Can Curran Reservoir. And I've shot here plenty of times before. But what I'd like to do today is bring you here in the daylight so you can see the surrounding countryside. You can get an idea, a better appreciation perhaps of the struggles I had to go through to get the shots that I'm going to show you shortly. Uh, so it's just a little bit of a walk down there. But before we do that, there's a couple of things that I found I needed the other night that came in very, very handy. So let's have a look at them. Firstly, I needed good footwear because the grass is long. It was very cold. It got down to about one degree Celsius and the grass was wet as anything. And I found my, the bottom of my pants getting damp. So my boots came in handy, waterproof to a point. Uh, but I'll tell you one other thing, because I had my boots, one thing I bought recently and I've been using them through the winter are these. These are Azaki heated insole for my boots. So they're battery operated, USB rechargeable, and they're absolutely fantastic. So they keep my feet warm, even though it's really cold, and particularly when the outside of the boot gets damp, oh, it, it just keeps my feet warm. And you know, for me, I've got long extremities, and my fingers and my toes always get cold when I'm out shooting, and, and these things are a lifesaver, believe me. Now, one other thing that is an absolute lifesaver is this and i had to use this this is a lens warmer i've got quite a few different ones of these this is just a usb powered lens warmer. It wraps around the lens powered by a battery something like this just a usb um, power bank plug that in wrap around the lens i put it all into this little hessian bag hang that off the tripod hook somewhere like that and it's not very heavy easy to carry around and it just stops that lens from fogging over and let me tell you i use the the nikon 20 mm f 1.8 s lens it does fog up a fair bit because it's got a, quite a large element at the front and i'll just wrap this around never a problem after that all right anyway now that that's out of the way let's go for a walk
Okay, so here is my little tree subject that was in my calendar. Now you'll remember early on, I mentioned that I had quite a few issues to overcome. Well, let me tell you what the main issue was, and that is the lake. I'm right next to the lake, the reservoir. We have had probably about, oh, I don't know, 200 millimeters of rain in the last few weeks. This lake has risen dramatically and it's not up to the tree, but it's very close to the tree. So what does that mean? It means I couldn't get my camera far enough back to get the composition that I was after. Oh man, as soon as, and, I was, and I came here in the middle of the night, so I couldn't really work it out until I actually got there. And I'm, I'm splashing around in the water thinking, man, this wasn't here last time I was here. So consequently, that plan was absolutely kaput. I couldn't do anything with the tree because the Milky Way Galactic cores over there in, in the west looked magnificent, although there was a little bit of hazy cloud around, which was also gonna be a problem. So I decided I'd move on and see what else that I could find. So I'll go and show you what I did find. Okay, so I think you guys know me well enough to realize how much I love trees. We have an abundance of trees here in the landscape in Australia. There's a couple here which I scouted out, and I actually have shot one of these trees in the past, but facing a different direction over the lake, facing towards the east. So of course, at this time of year, the Milky Way in the west, I needed to get down over there. And once again, I'm starting to get a little bit thwarted by the high level of the water, because I wanna shoot, even at 20 millimeters, which is a pretty wide angle lens, it's pretty hard to get the whole tree in the shot. So I'm, I'm looking down further down the shoreline and thinking, oh man, all of the trees are following the ebbs and flows of the shoreline. So I'm not gonna get any better. And further down there, the, the water is very close and it's more of a, a drop off into the water. So I was sort of thinking, I'm gonna have to do something with the, these trees. So what am I going to do? All right, so you can see from the angles that I've got here, there's no possible way that I can fit both of these trees in or even one of the trees into my shot without resorting to shooting a panorama. So that's exactly what I decided to do. I just had to make use of what conditions I had. Now this brings me to a very important lesson that we learn as photographers. And you know what that is, is to change our plans on the fly. Because when I decided to come here, the water was way out there in my mind. I thought no worries with the water, but hey, things change. So I've got to make up my mind and all of the time, the Milky Way's coming down, down, down. It's setting lower in the sky. So my mind is racing. I'm going 100 miles an hour thinking, what am I going to do and how am I going to do this? Well, it worked out. I just set my camera up into portrait orientation. So because of that, I was able to get a lot of the foreground, this beautiful grass. There's lots of rocks here on the ground. Now, one of the other things that I was happy about was the fact that there was no wind. And when you're shooting trees with long exposures, uh, well, you know what I'm talking about. At the moment, there's a little bit of a breeze blowing and I can see those, those leaves are rustling. So of course they're going to blur, but when there's no wind, which there wasn't the other night, which was one thing in my favor, they were nice and still. So you get a much crisper foreground image. Now, this is not exactly the spot where I was because I just can't get my camera down there at the moment, but this is basically the Western sky. And you can see here, if I put my PhotoPills app, you can see the Milky Way galactic core directly over or in between these two trees. And as it sets down, it goes between the two trees behind this one and behind that one over there. So that's facing west. Here in the Southern Hemisphere, we have this amazing Milky Way galactic core, which looks absolutely fantastic. Okay, so this is how I was planning for this night to go. I was going to be using my Nikon Z6 Hydrogen Alpha modified camera. And I'm using my, as I said, my Nikon 20 millimeter F 1.8 lens. Now my intention was to shoot the foreground of my subject here and then bring my tracker out and shoot the background sky as a tracked shot. Now in this case, because I had to shoot a pano here, then I shot the foreground as a panorama 
between the two trees, as I said, at 15 second shutter speeds, at f2.8, and I shot that at about ISO 3200. Bit of light painting. Now what I did there, I used my torch, it's as simple as that, and every single exposure I lit separately. Now, ideally, perhaps low level lighting might have been a better option, but the problem is I just couldn't place my lights where I could uh, get the best angle on these trees because of the water. And also I didn't want to get the lights in the pano because it's a real pain to get rid of them because I was sweeping around a fair way. And so what I decided, and I've done this before, but it takes a fair bit of practice, a bit of experience comes in handy, and that's just to light each one with the torch separately. And then, of course, when I'm processing those images, I've got to make sure that I get the lighting fairly even across the foreground. But one thing I do like about that is I can get all of these rocks here in the foreground and the, the shrubs and, and the, the, the grass, whatever's there, it shines out beautifully because of the low angle of the light. And of course, then what I did, I got my tracker out and I didn't use the tracker from here. I just went up there behind the trees. So I've got a clean sky and I lined up on the South Celestial Pole. Now, initially I had trouble with that. Why? Because it was cloudy down there to the south. So I couldn't actually see the South Celestial Pole. Uh, so I had to wait a little bit. I was getting nervous because the Milky Way Galactic Core is getting a bit lower as I did that. But finally the sky cleared. Still a little bit of light um, on the clouds down there, but actually the light on the horizon is a town way off in the distance. I didn't actually mind it. And in the end, I absolutely love this shot. Okay, so these trees do stand out in the landscape. They're quite prominent. But you know, one of the things that I'm always looking for is something to shoot that typically you would walk straight past. Something that's insignificant. And my aim is always to try and capture something that's a bit of a diamond in the rough. Something, maybe, I don't know, there might be hundreds of them around, but we just walk straight past them. Well, that's exactly what I found here just the other night. So, just down there, not far from the car, I'm gonna show you my second subject for the night. And here it is. This is my diamond in the rough. Have a look at it. Just a small little gum sapling. There's hundreds of them around the place here, but I found this one that seemed to be a little bit away from all the rest. And that's one of the things I'm always looking for when looking for a subject to shoot a nightscape. I need enough space for the background sky to feature in the image. But this little one here, I just love the little curve, a little kick in the trunk of the tree. So how did I shoot this one? I was pretty tired by this time. It was getting very late, very cold. Gee, I was glad of those uh, foot warmers in my boots, I can tell you, because it was so wet around here. I set my tracker up right here, facing this way. So I'm actually in front of the tree just here, facing over that direction. And I shot just a single frame with the tracker with my 20 mil F1.8 Nikon Z6 with the hydrogen alpha modified version. And I shot that at F2.8, 60 second shutter speed. That's one minute. Remember, I'm on a tracker and uh, ISO 1600. And I've been shooting quite a few images with the tracker, just single shots at those settings. And they seem to work out pretty well at 20 millimeters. Uh, and I was pretty happy with that. Very happy, in fact. 
and then I just put the camera down the other side of the tree facing this direction again and I shot my fine art light painting method but one thing I want to explain to you now you would have seen in my settings on various images that I shoot I use what I call an ambient sky exposure so people ask me all the time what's this ambient sky exposure well essentially it's this when I'm shooting on a star tracker I need to be able to put that star tracked uh, image behind the foreground images because when you shoot with a star tracker everything the foreground blurs nothing is is sharp so you can't do a standard layering blending without doing a fair bit of work on the foreground so what I do is I take what is known as an ambient sky exposure which is simply the composition behind the tree over there putting the tree off to the side so I've got that beautiful core on the left hand side of the tree a lot of dead space there which worked out perfectly and uh, the ambient exposure is so that I can use the Photoshop sky replacement algorithm to simply replace the sky with the one that I shot on the tracker. It's as simple as that. Because I need something in the background for the sky to be replaced with. And that's what I call it, an ambient. Now there's no light painting on that one. It's just the dark silhouette of the tree. So I shot that typically at about ISO 3200 or thereabouts, f2.8 at 15 second shutter speed. Similar to what I typically, typically shoot a single shot for the sky. And then I stopped down the aperture at f5.6, did not, and I want to repeat this, did not change the focus. I was still focused to infinity, but I was back about maybe three or four meters away from the tree. Now at f5.6 on a 20 millimeter lens, that brings the foreground, the depth of field a lot closer. And therefore the foreground is in focus, even at infinity. Anyway, I did my standard light painting with my fine art light painting method did some lighting on the tree from various angles I took about three images of that um, blended the whole lot together uh, Lightroom firstly and then into Photoshop then back to Lightroom and look I love this image it's just a simple tree a diamond in the rough but I hope I made it look a little bit more special than that And so there you have it. That's my little expedition out here initially to shoot the tree that was on my calendar, but that was a complete fail. But nevertheless, I was able to find some other subject matter and I hope you like the end result. All right, thanks so much for watching the channel, tuning in, give us a thumbs up, give us a like, subscribe if you love this sort of content because I'll be bringing plenty more of it to you for the rest of the year. And I'm looking forward to some more adventures capture that Milky Way over there in the west. Anyway, you guys have a fantastic week. I'll see you next time.